so we're trying all these different ways out. We're trying all these. There's different methods. We've been trying lots of different. Yeah, we've been listening for a long time. Listening for a long time, um, and there's lots more options available to us. But if if we take that Drake equation, it's it's possible if there's if there, most of the estimates are not that there's one civilization mm-hmm. in the galaxy. No, and it's actually um, worth saying that like the vast majority of them put even like lower estimates being like tens to hundreds yes in our galaxy yes and then way up i mean they yeah. go up to like hundreds of millions so so the, the question then is if you've got all these these civilizations that are have are potentially are much older than us so say they became civilized around the time of even like just the dinosaurs like 65 million years ago they're going to be huge if they're still around you would expect them to have spread a long way across the galaxy by yeah. now like we're talking about all these different type civilizations um You'd expect a, an, a, an old civilization that's millions of years old to have to have conquered a good part of the galaxy, or at least you would expect there to be some uh, electromagnetic signals mm. or uh, radio signals, or any, a, well, yeah, uh, that are coming to Earth, or that the, the galaxy sort of awash with them. Yeah, but we don't hear nothing. We <laughs> never heard nothing. Never heard nothing. Not a, not a peep. And so, this so what's is, going on with that? Yeah. So people, this is what people call the fermi paradox yeah because that that was enrico fermi just said that one day i think it's like it's like a conference or something he's like where is everybody and yeah. like that's why it's known as the fermi paradox because he yes. sort of framed it like that yeah um but it's a good question if you really yeah. think about it there are thousands of civilizations probably like based on the the average drake equation estimates yeah they we should have heard something from them by yeah. now the, the, the galaxy should be you, sh- you would expect the galaxy to be awash with signals from yeah them. especially as everything we've learned about like our place in like the universe and stuff has taught us that there's nothing unique about the earth in the sense that like the same chemistry applies like the same yeah. laws of physics are everywhere whatever whatever and so the, like these exoplanet things with kepler just like oh yeah by the way 20 percent of all stars have a planet in the habitable. Yeah, it's the like way. it's like oh like why did we ever think that wasn't the case yeah and like water is absolutely everywhere and like organic chemistry which life is based on is absolutely everywhere yeah yeah comets so it's, are just it's, full of amino acids like yeah you know it's 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 in the interstellar dust and like whatever it's, yeah. it's fucking everywhere so like <laughs> sick of it so 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 that gives you a good reason to say like okay you know there's, there, we can't assume that this is like a unique place like there's not there's nothing that really points in that direction so we might we must assume that there's other civilizations so where are they like why like why have we not heard anything from them um and there's like no i mean there's you can think of a million answers for it probably one of the most obvious like ones to just go in with straight away is that we just haven't been looking hard enough or in the right places yeah um, which is possibly true yeah and i just would just say this is important to understand in answering the question of like what are yeah. the chances of us detecting a civilization yeah because the in a sense the answer to what are the chances of us detecting a civilization is that it should be extremely high yeah we should have detected them yeah but the fact that we don't suggests that there's something we don't understand yet so you've got to kind of speculate about what it is that we're missing here um mm. in order to in order to answer that question a bit more um so yeah you were saying so yeah so the, the, so the most obvious way which actually sort of sidesteps the problem somewhat is that this russian mug is oh, cool yeah it's nice isn't it <laughs> it's very nice it fits a beer can like perfectly mm yeah uh if you're listening to this yeah so, so <laughs> mark has a, a cool ru- sort of russian tea mug holder thing I th- apparently anyway, it's a tea mug. my brother gave it to me yeah it's very cool um, anyway um y- y- uh, origin y- of life y- y- that? Y- no i wasn't not no. quite okay. first, first just gonna say like it's possible that the the paradox the fermi paradox doesn't even exist because we oh. haven't been looking in the right places of or, yes or yeah. in the right wavelengths or like for long enough and we, or we haven't just been able to sift out the, the signals from the noise and stuff yeah so breakthrough listen for example we might by the end of next year we might be like oh there is no fermi paradox there's yeah. like a million civilizations yeah like, we just haven't everywhere. been looking in the right quite in the right place um that does seem less likely yeah in a way maybe it doesn't seem less likely i'm not quite sure what that seems no um i guess we don't know i mean i think you still you you would still expect if there were like a bunch of civilizations everywhere yes that we would have heard something by now or seen something or anything even even with our limited like but then again it might you might have to look at a certain part of the sky survey a certain part of the sky yeah. with radio telescopes to yeah. really get an idea and we have surveyed such a tiny portion um yeah that 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 maybe there are you know at, at certain maybe it's like three points in the sky three like very very tiny points and we've you know we've surveyed like maybe a hundred thousand of these equivalent size points and there's like a billion to survey yeah. or something like that yeah um so 
it's possible but that, that we have to we have to we can't we got to work on the, the 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 possibility that we won't find anything as well yeah um so that's one option is that simply there is no paradox we haven't we haven't looked hard enough yet. yeah um, we haven't dedicated so, enough resources to it yeah there certainly aren't like loads of civilizations out there like piling out high energy radio signals at a lot of the surveys so far i've looked at this particular uh, band of radio which is oh, like yeah. at the hydro the high no, the water what's it called the water hole or something which I is like the wavelength hole. of hydrogen no sorry i can't even remember what it is now but it's basically like a quiet point in the radio spectrum that they reckon it, civilizations would communicate at yes that's intentional communication yes yeah. yes not necessarily directly with us like the optical stuff no. but like that they use that because it's just a quiet yes it would it, make sense it's, it's it makes sense to use that because it's quiet and you can sift it out from the noise better yeah. and we know because we've been looking for 40 years that there's that we, we're not surrounded by civilizations communicating in that in that wavelength no. so if if they if we are surrounded by civilizations we've got to look further and like and um sift through more more noise so yes. it does see it does still seem like the fermi paradox holds and it's still a pretty baffling question yeah as to like where the hell everyone is mm -hmm. so there's other possibilities right tons these these great filter things which we can probably talk about yeah which are can be truly quite scary <laughs> yes they can be scary or or they so that the great filter is basically a, a point some sort of event that explains why there's so little um, or we haven't seen any other civilizations yet. We haven't yeah. come in con into contact with them or detected any part of them. Um, and some of these predate where we are now in our development and some of them post-date where we yeah. are now um, uh, or would happen in the future to us. So the first one is like the formation of a, a planet, a habitable planet, right? Yeah, maybe um, that's like Maybe that's rare. actually really rare to get a planet like the Earth. Yeah. Um, and then origin of life yeah maybe yeah maybe like actually having s some kind of like self-replicating molecules whatever like the, the origin of life is just super super rare yeah. and requires such a like a tiny like chance event uh, uh, that it happens like once every you know like really really rare basically. and that's that's quite possible i, I, feel, quite I feel like that's quite a plausible yeah. part of the great yeah. filter that yeah I think so, and obviously, like looking in our solar system for evidence of other microbial life and stuff is like a good way of trying yes. to address that. Yeah, if you find two origins of life in your solar system, one on Mars, say one on Earth, yeah. you can kind of discount that as, yeah. a, as the great filter. Yeah, which is potentially bad news. Maybe well, we'll, we'll get onto that in a second. Yes, yeah, yeah. Make sure you remember that. <laughs> yeah, because that's cool. Um, then it's multicellular life. Yeah, I was just going to say though, yeah. your first point about habitable planets being difficult maybe that's a great filter but we can sort of discount that maybe because mars was maybe was probably habitable yes it was habitable yeah um so it, but looks it might like... not be like that you have this like lot like the earth type yeah okay sure so sure long term, sure. Long -term tectonically yeah, driven sustained habitability although tectonics may be related to life anyway and sustained think. habitability might be related to life yeah 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 the gaia stuff yeah yeah quite possible <laughs> um yeah so but I, I think you're right in that way i think actually probably that isn't the great filter i think there probably are planets like earth yeah um that, are, that, that could not, sustain life and that aren't that uncommon you just look at mars venus and jupiter uh, mars, mars <laughs> venus and earth yeah they're all quite similar planets in yeah. a way and you'd expect if you got three planets like that in one system although they've ended up in different end members two of them were habitable at different points in there yeah maybe three venus might possibly yeah possibly um then it, it seems unlikely that that's the great filter. Yeah. The origin of life is a possibility because that is a pretty, seemingly a very chance event. We yeah. don't, we don't really know anything about it yeah. because it's so kind of complex and, and a bit mysterious in that way that, um, yeah, it, it's hard to say either way if that is a likely great filter. But yeah. certainly, exploring our own solar system will help. Yeah, yeah, but assuming it's not, like, say, assuming that microbial life is everywhere, like the origin of life is not difficult. Yeah. Maybe like this, uh, there's obviously like stages throughout the evolution of intelligence yeah. that could also act like like complex life, like multicellular life. Maybe that's like a step in evolution, which is yeah. which is really difficult to make, yeah. or, or like just really rare that it doesn't, you know, it just sort of happened as an accident here, yeah. and it doesn't normally happen. Well, yeah, exactly, or or, or, or from, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And then you know, up from there, like maybe maybe tool use and and like development of intelligence yeah. is something again that's like a bit of an accident here you think about those big jumps usually happen yeah there's big jumps in evolution you kind of get to multicellular life and then you kind of get land-based life is another big jump i suppose yeah um but really the the big jump from multicellular is is 
the development of in- intelligence seemingly. yeah um in terms of the effect it had on the planet yeah and and so maybe i mean we had life on earth for you know 3.5 3.8 depending on how well possibly 4.1 mm. some of those new yeah 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 those um, crazy zircon things yeah uh, which predate the heavy late heavy that's mental which is mad um possibly that actually that so as uh, that stuff that possible evidence of life 4.1 billion years ago could could be taken as evidence that the origin of life isn't that difficult or isn't that rare i know that sounds a bit weird but because it happened so soon after if that it is life and that happened so soon after the formation of the earth yeah that's true while it's all going still going mental and hot and crazy yes that that it didn't take that long to develop but yeah yeah that doesn't necessarily mean it's not rare though no just because it didn't take long no um so maybe not yeah let's forget that <laughs> yeah no well uh, well it's it's still it's a je- uh, life's been around on earth for basically it I, I still think there's a point to that. I think the further you push that back into the Earth's like clearly just lava covered history, yeah, then the more likely it is that life actually doesn't take as long as you might think to develop yeah. on a on a planet like Earth. Yeah, that's that's sort of what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah. Um, which yeah, which it's it's really difficult to see to for me to decide like where I think that likely great filter might be in like the development of life. Mm. I sort of feel intuitively like it must be the origin of life. Yeah, but we just have no idea we need a well, second well, biosphere to look at exactly so i was saying i was saying life has been around for what for three billion years whatever um let's say four billion years because mm, mm. it's a better number yeah. um it took four billion years to develop into us into complex life yeah into, sorry into into intelligent civilized life as we that, that is able to put out its own yeah that we, we, we would signals. be capable of detecting and and launch stuff to space etc etc yeah. so four that's four billion years okay of evolution of life on a on a stable planet is yeah. required to get to that point and it may that that of course that may chance that chance may happen earlier or later uh, depending on what it is but four billion years is is like i don't know like a third of the age of the universe yeah i find that really odd like <laughs> when i think about that yeah okay like, the universe is like three point thirteen point thirteen point six or 13. something six yeah roughly call it 14 up. like whatever round it up yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's still it's still even if you do that it's like it's it's the universe is really really young yeah like the, the kind well, of yeah it is it's like if it's, you, so compared to earth it is compared the history compared of Earth. To, yeah, compared to the history of Earth. And also compared to, like, extrapolated the lifetime of the universe. Mm. Like, the heat death, which it seems to be, like, the most likely sort of extrapolation of the acceleration of the expansion of the universe, all that stuff, is going to be in, like, a hundred trillion years or something like yes. this, right? Yeah. So that's a hundred like hundred trillion years. And we're at the, the tiny, like, sliver at the beginning of that now. Yeah. So, like, that seems really odd that we, we are around... Like, why aren't we just, like, surely, surely by chance... Like, a, if you were just to, like by chance emerge at some point during the history of the universe you would expect it to be like somewhere in the middle rather yeah. than right at the very beginning well i guess this is the thing that the, the reason the foam paradox exists may be just because uh, and for these reasons that we're quite we just haven't had that enough time yet for us to be common and we're one of these like pioneering civilizations yeah, like one of the first which is which is a cool thing but it's also a bit depressing it's kind of i find it kind of terrifying in a weird way just like not terrifying in like a i'm scared of it but it's like a kind vertigo of, inducing yeah like a we're on our own shit yeah um no one's ever done this before and we won't we will we'll maybe never like if that is the case we maybe we'll never detect anything else and mm-hmm. we never will quite know that that's the case or maybe we'll be like we'll be like lords of the universe so we're like we're like yeah. we're like the first out the gate right we come mm. super super advanced and like go and seed other planets with life and come back and they all think we're gods and like all that mad shit like the other way around to what happens just in build Prometheus. loads of fucking badass like structures everywhere and like yeah stuff that people have no idea what just it is just build stuff for. to freak them out like pyramids and like i don't know the ice caps i'm thinking of stuff like like i don't know like the mass relay stuff in in mass effect <laughs> or like i don't know just like cool stuff that's littered yeah. around the galaxies just like people stumble across like oh this is built by an ancient civilization yeah that was us that was us that was us we're just bossing it somewhere else yeah <laughs> outside space and time yeah fuck yeah <laughs> I, would, I quite like that idea of us yeah. being a pioneering civilization i do like that as well i just wish i was going to be around to sort of see all that happen yeah yeah I've, i i it does depress me the thought of not coming into contact with an alien civilization because that's like the biggest thing that could ever happen in, to yeah. anyone yeah um but those so on that on the the note of um it being early in the universe and stuff mm-hmm. and being us being sort of temporally isolated like isolated in time from other civilizations like there's gonna be loads more in the future 
there was this there was actually like a paper on that that i saw pop up people had done this study it was really simple it basically looked at like the rate of planet formation over the last through 13 billion years oh right and and showing that we are basically in the very very early stages of planet formation of the universe so if you look at the entire oh, lifetime of the vaguely, universe yeah like only like 0.000001% of all planets that will ever form have formed at this point so there's going to be like a peak yeah. in like maybe 100 billion years where there's going to be the most planets being formed and therefore presumably and therefore the most presumably life. the most life and the most civilizations and stuff so yeah so that's actually putting some numbers to what we were just talking about um that paper so that was, that's I, I read that i was like that's kind of convincing like i i I could yeah I could buy that yeah I could buy that hook line because it's so early like what the hell is that about it's in the universe's lifetime like we're right at the very beginning of it yes which is odd four billion years it took to get to us from life evolving and it's a third of the age of the universe yeah nearly or whatever roughly yeah that's mad so the there are more dire scenarios though than these these are kind of these yeah. are, in a way these are the optimistic scenarios yeah these are yeah 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 the um, sort of benign even though, ones well even though they're sort of depressing that we may never come across a civilization this way it's more depressing to think that the great filter is after us yes in our future in our future after us yeah in our future so that this means basically that there are that civilizations do develop to our point or somewhere near our point but then something happens something that's very effective at removing them yes. so that we don't so that they don't broadcast long enough or even at all so that could be like a natural disaster yeah um, whatever it could be like a, a self-induced disaster like so nuclear this... war or something nuclear war something like um, that yeah like you said climate change just screwing up your planet you yeah always basically just screw it up irrec you know you just destroy it yeah without being able to uh, reverse that mm. effect um i feel like those those aren't my favored great for uh, post great there's the, the big one is is maybe ai mm. um and another one is another one before we talk about a bit more about ai a little bit potentially potentially civilizations just get don't st just stop exploring as well they they get to a point where they're so comfortable and so used to whatever they just become like a brain in a jar basically and the brain in the jar is just like loving life whatever it's just not yeah they just it's learn having how to... a, it's having a simulated existence yeah. essentially yeah. so it never has to it never it never thinks about exploring the universe because essentially in its simulated life it is doing that yeah so so yeah so maybe because we only really explore the universe because it gives us pleasure to do that you know like we're yes. just animals at the end of the day yeah. and like we're curious animals yeah and it, so it's if we can satisfy that by being a brain in a jar yeah it's not where well, it's not yeah it's, it's crucial to your survival to like a species survival like it's an innate yeah no it's, it, that, uh, yeah. no it's evolved for a reason yeah. for sure um yeah. but ultimately like once you've taken care of like All things that needs. are going to kill you that yes. that that curious curiosity or whatever is there and it gives us it, it makes us feel good I don't, I don't know like it kind of it's what we do it does make us feel good yeah we said we've evolved to do it but it's what we do and like yeah. if you can fulfill that that kind of need just by being a brain in a jar like it's simulating a reality then you would then, lose your but you wouldn't care about trying to explore and you just sort yeah. of stay wherever you were so you get all kind of insular and like a, just yeah. like remove yourself really from yeah. from from the real universe yeah which is possible yeah that's possible is it is it to be a great filter though it has to be sort of so efficient at removing civilizations it's like because we, we're talking about we haven't seen anybody so shit. we haven't seen we haven't seen shit <laughs> <laughs> so to, to be to be a great filter it has to be like <laughs> yeah. kind of like a blanket like okay we are like the only ones that have got through it or or that's what's inevitably yeah. like absolutely inevitably going to happen to us so maybe soon. so something that we could fill that gap is, is ai then yeah possibly which is that which is inevitably civilizations like ours develop some form of artificial intelligence that becomes exponentially more intelligent and and takes over the civilization either destroying it or or do, do, to whatever turning it to its own needs or i mean suppose it's, that this is like an unfriendly ai situation yeah which is we will talk about ai in another video yeah. definitely but, but that would be in a ve if if life if organic life always needs to build com computers and things in order to solve problems and, and make their lives better because biology doesn't through through darwinian selection can't produce something like a computer um or not like a computer that's powerful enough to do what we want it to do yes yeah exactly i mean we're our brains are no but it can't produce like a, cl a computer like a classical computer or right whatever. like a you know something that's that's that can do specific processes very very efficiently yeah. like all the calculations computers can do that we can't basically yeah, yeah. um and then uses that to turn it into systems i i, I feel like this is like a 
a, a route that civilizations could realistically always take yeah i i, I, could, um, I could believe that and that the, it's it's an inevitable conflict that happens in the universe the kind of the inevitable conflict between synthetic and bio, biological life yes yes because it's probably a hell of a lot easier to create an ai accidentally that then kills you rather than yes. one that like it, well kills you or just does something like, just has it totally indifferent to you and just is serving its own needs yes rather than something that's kind of benign and happy and fun and helps yeah. you out however the problem with all this though is that where are all the ais yes that's a question so um, say the ai so civilizations are killed by their ais yeah like where are they <laughs> yeah that's 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 obviously a, the next step of it but i guess you could you argue anything about an ai wouldn't would i guess they'd still put out the same um I mean, yeah, maybe an AI, is. maybe an AI would be deliberately like hiding itself or something. I, 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 I don't know. Or just have no need to like be broadcasting stuff for whatever reason. But you'd expect like leakage essentially. Yeah, you would. You would. Yeah. So where are the AIs? And you'd imagine these things are just like if they're exponentially increasing in intelligence and exponentially increasing in like their need for resources and and mm. use of that they'd actually become these like Kardashev type two. You know, they'd be like doing whatever like moving stars about or you know doing dismantling stuff and you know whatever um so that's uh, i don't know like it, well, I, I, agree, like a, I agree with you that it's something that i think is is if you're not killed by something else that you will a civilization will likely develop something like ai i was, think i agree with you on that what about something like gray goo though something that's not necessarily intelligent so Grey Goose, like, was it like thousands of millions of billions of nanobots yeah, 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 get yeah. produced, self-replicating nanobots that just consume an entire planet? Yeah, just of, sort of, of try of and life. turn everything into like copies of themselves, basically. Yeah, um, that they may they may have no way to then escape the gravity of the planet they're on because mm. they've never they've never learnt a way in which to do that. They've never they've never they were never designed to do that, so they're just designed to like consume the planet essentially. Yeah, and then they do that and they can't like get out of the planet. Yeah, so they just they just either to stop working or whatever so it's like a, a sort of stupid ai in a sense it's yeah. just like a like a virus that's gone mental yeah i yeah i mean that is a plausible way in which a civilization could kill itself i guess um i'm trying to think of it like to be again to be like a great filter that explains the fermi, fermi paradox it has to, it has to be like almost perfectly efficient at removing civilizations yeah and i just can't see something like no. that being being that it might it might 99% of civilizations might get removed through that process possibly but I, I I agree it seems slightly more f it seems slightly far fetched uh, this is this is why I still favor the, the yeah exactly the, that's the, what I'm kind of coming back to I guess yeah, it, that actually it's a, the great filter is is we've already gone through it which would be good news but that's why so that's why earlier yeah. when I said um discovery of life on Mars would be bad news for us yes yeah, because basically it makes yeah someone said that i can't remember who it was, was it nick bostrom or someone like that it might well have been yeah um yeah um i think it was actually he's a guy who, he's at oxford who's like really into like existential risk and what's going to happen to us in the future and all this great filter stuff yeah um but yeah because if you discovered microbial life on mars or historic microbial like fossils or whatever it would suggest that the great filter is not in our past or or is or is one of the biggest one of the potential biggest, great filters the origin of life is actually not so much of a filter because if it's happened twice in our solar system it's gonna have happened everywhere yeah he, he he's phrased it as something like that i don't know if it was nick russian whoever it was it would be the worst yeah. front page of a newspaper that has ever been printed yeah because it would literally literally be the worst news ever it's basically us reading it and saying shit the great filter was in front of us we're almost certainly fucked <laughs> Yeah. like like because because well no well is it is it hold on a minute well no, no well it's it's not nothing we're already fact it's just it just removes one of those the really big you know great potential yeah. great photos origin of life and then development of intelligence seem mm. to be the two big ones to me yeah um yes and so you still you've only got the hope then that the development of intelligence is incredibly mm. slow and rare and the yeah. universe hasn't had time to do it but that seems unlikely more it seems less likely than those two combined would combine to you know re very effectively remove civilizations so far from the universe yeah um i know what you mean um yeah that, i mean that's a very that the way that he's framed that is a very nick bostrom thing a way to frame things like a, a saying like it's the worst possible news that we could ever ever receive it's obviously not because 
It's yeah, it, do, it doesn't mean the great filters in our, it definitely in our future, but it does make it maybe possibly more likely. Yeah. And the scary thing about that is that um, other civilizations say that have met this great filter and yeah. been removed by it. Yeah. Um, will have probably also worked that out themselves as well and been like, shit, shit, let's do something about it, <laughs> just like we will be. And, and failed. failed. Yes. So if that is the case and it is in our future, then we're probably screwed. Yeah. But um. Yeah. yeah. Is it? That's so cool. <laughs>